Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and it's a cold morning here in Georgia in March. March is actually the craziest month for winter temperatures here. It can be 80 degrees, it can be 25 degrees. And so last night we actually got down below freezing, and I want to go check and see how the greenhouse is doing. Now, honestly, it's still not 100% sealed. I need to uh, put some more mulch in there, wood chips along the edges. A few more areas to close up so it is letting some of the warm air out but I am curious to see with the thermal camera what kind of temperatures we're dealing with um, inside the greenhouse I also want to check the draft on the uh, earth air tube I'm actually gonna use a, a match someone suggested that as an idea or a smoking stick to see how uh, that is venting one way or the other We'll use the thermal camera to check temperatures and see how we're doing. All right, let's go check it out. All right, before I open this up, I'm going to put my thermal camera in the iPhone. This is a Seek thermal camera. Just did. They make this with different connectors, so you can use it on Android devices as well. It's about 200 bucks. It's really cool. I've enjoyed having this just to be able to measure temperatures and see heat. All right, let's switch to thermal. But here on our greenhouse, you can see that the the door there, which is only one layer of plastic, is uh, letting out some heat. Uh, Whereas our roof, which was double layer of plastic, is not. Alright, so our ambient ground temperature here is looks like 43 degrees Fahrenheit. A little cooler, 41 degrees in the air. Ooh. You can see on my house there how much heat I'm losing through the edge of my slab. Gonna get that slab edge insulation in place. My brother's in town. Say hello, Tim. Hello. This live. This is not live. Oh, okay. So this is a uh, called a. It's a little muddy down here, but how do you pronounce it? Hugo culture. This is the Hugo culture over here, but this is a Wallapini portion. So the yeah. subterranean. Yeah. So the the ambient heat from this is about 50 degrees down in here, uh -huh. even though we're a lot cooler outside. Yeah. Just lean this door back in here to keep some of that cold air from getting in. So our trench here is a Wallapini concept, which is a subterranean greenhouse that's used in colder climates. And normally the whole greenhouse is dug down about six to eight feet below ground the ground surface. And that's allowing the ambient heat from the earth to, to make the air temperature in the greenhouse warm enough that you can grow vegetables or at least cold weather vegetables during the, the winter months, the colder months. Down in the trench, we're at 55 degrees. The walls of the trench are 57 degrees. So my whole greenhouse isn't a wallapini, but I'm definitely using that, that concept here to, first of all, allow access within a low greenhouse like this for me to stand up, but at the same time, providing that ambient heat. The hugel culture beds are also going to be generating heat as well uh, just because as the wood chips decompose and compost they're going to generate heat as well a little bit. I did plant the greenhouse a couple weeks ago and I'm starting to see some lettuce coming up as well as some kale. I think the heart-shaped leaves are kale the oval shaped leaves are weeds. Still have some weeds in here. Little cluster of kale there. Got my seed packets tacked up here to show me what I've got in the rows. Another facet of the trench is the idea of a cold sink. That same thing, thermodynamics, 
hot air rises, so cold air should sink. So the trench allows the cold, the coldest air to pool down here um, and then uh, drain out this pipe. And I'm gonna use just a, got a little uh, grill lighter here. I'm gonna use this flame to see if we can tell which way the air is flowing. I got a flame, let's see if we can determine. All right, so it's blowing backwards this way. So I got hot air rising up out of the tube. Looks like 61 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of the tube there. Let's go check the low end and see if it's draining as well. And down here to the lower end. Here's the other end of the earth air tube. And let's see what we're talking about here temperature wise. Ground temperatures like 50 degrees, 52 degrees. And then there's our, our tube. I think we got about 54, 55 degrees. And it looks to me like it's pulling, so it's not, we don't see that flowing out necessarily. So, what I expected to see, given that our draft was pushing up. So warm air is being pulled in through this earth air tube, which starts here at the end of the hugoculture bed. Rises up underneath that mass of soil, all the way to inside the greenhouse screen back. I need to make this permanent. This is just temporary right now, but keep the craters out. It's a cold morning, so I'm going to be dealing with some downdraft here. heat coming out here. There's the drafting. That's good. Got a lot of scrap 2x4 from the construction of my house and garage, so I want to be able to just put a whole 2x4 in this rocket furnace. Need some more small wood though. Being able to use larger pieces of wood like this will let me not have to tend this quite so frequently, which is a concern I heard in the comments. It's 
true, this is not a big firebox. I may modify this later to add a fuel magazine to it. Perhaps take the this brick being loose, I can perhaps reconfigure this to have the fuel magazine coming out the top here so that wood can feed in on its own. I'll be for a later video. Let's let this warm up and then we'll see if we're getting any heat gain on the inside. This is still cold to the touch. That insulated concrete here with the per perlite and cement is doing a great job. Again, what's remarkable to me is that we're that hot inside, but then going up to the top of the dome of the stove, and we're only at 55 degrees. So there's a little bit, a little bit warmer up there, 59. So a huge temperature difference between the inside of the firebox and the top of our insulated concrete dome. It will get hotter though, as this thing fires for a longer period of time. Nice burn going on the rocket stove here. I can hear a little bit of the of the air being pulled in. That power draft makes it a rocket stove. Although we're not 100% rocket stove from the design standpoint. Don't have a true uh, combustion chamber on this. So we have components of the rocket stove. Certainly the draft, which is the biggest part of what makes a rocket stove work. Burn more efficiently. I will say that I know I had several comments about my neighbors being concerned about the smoke, but you can see here when we're burning efficiently, there really is no smoke coming out of the top. Switching to thermal here, we can see we've got a, about 130 or so degrees Fahrenheit coming out of the top. Looking down our pipe here. The pipe itself, the metal itself, isn't heating up too much. It's warm to the touch. Let's go see our temperature difference. So, 136 here on the top. Let's walk back down to the firebox and see what we're looking at down here. So, it's like we're burning at about 626 degrees Fahrenheit. At least on the front edge here. Probably hotter back in. I've had a few comments also about creating a cover for this. Um, I do have some air holes in the bottom of the hearth, so it drafts underneath as well. So I will be constructing a, a door that will sit on the top and cover the front with maybe a, you know, an air hole in it to allow air to be pulled in from the front at a higher rate of speed. Let this burn for a while, then we can. Then we'll go look inside and see if we've got any more uh, temperature difference between the top of the soil there and what's coming out of our heat tubes.
this here. Birds are happy this morning. It's a mockingbird. Mockingbird makes lots of different sounds. So we can spot him. He's right up there. All right, we've been burning for about half an hour. Let's go inside and see if we've got any temperature gain. You can see that there is about a two degree difference between the surface temperature there on the soil and the air that's coming out of the the tubes. Those are just three aluminum dryer hose sections that drop down and connect underneath to where this air channel goes in. So it doesn't connect with the chimney, which is actually running underneath it. So no combustion gases are coming in there. Um, but uh, the idea is that that whole mass of clay there is being warmed by soaking up the heat from the furnace and um, and then letting that heat dissipate or rise up through these air tubes here pulling cool air from this trench through that channel in theory this is all theoretical of course i'm using the laws of physics here thermodynamics gravity uh, that uh, don't change and so i'm seeing if i can use air temperatures uh, to use convection to get heat to rise uh, and then in doing so warming this greenhouse in different ways so just a few degrees of temperature shift uh, which isn't huge and it's only been half an hour of burning the furnace so uh, it, it probably is still working at warming up the bottom of that hunk of clay there it's about two feet thick uh, and also still uh, warming the channel underneath the this hua culture bed right here, uh, which is where the chimney portion goes. So a lot of mass to warm up before we really start seeing a heat plume coming through those tubes. Anyway, I'm still optimistic that this is going to do what I want, which is to just add a few degrees of warmth to this greenhouse, especially on, on a cold night like we had last night. And that's significant while I have these tender baby shoots of seedlings coming up here. Uh, if I can just keep it just a degree or two above freezing, that's going to allow those uh, seedlings to not be harmed by the freezing temperatures. So this greenhouse will extend my growing season um, into the winter uh, and also uh, starting out earlier in the spring. Again, just cold weather vegetables here, kale, lettuce, things like that, that will tolerate cooler temperatures, provide food for my family. So I do need to do some more planting here uh, to do some more kale, uh, more lettuce. Uh, I kind of want stuff growing in different stages so I can harvest from the older plants first and then have newer plants to, to pick from later on. So, uh, and. I still put myself in the rookie gardener category, uh, which is I'm learning. And right now the most important thing I can do on this greenhouse is finish sealing it up, get that big air gap over here closed up so that I can keep as much of the warm air I'm creating 
and different methods uh, keep that inside this greenhouse uh, to do its job, letting me grow plants. So thanks for watching. Um, I may do another update on this later on once I've had a chance to experiment with the stove, uh, the furnace some more and see if I can get uh, warmer temperatures. But again, we're in March, so here in Georgia, I'm about to not need to heat this greenhouse. I'm about to be concerned about it being too hot. Uh, but uh, I'm hopeful that this wallapini feature down here, the trench, will actually cool this greenhouse during the summer. So I can grow some of those cooler wet weather vegetables that would normally not do well during a hot Georgia summer. So let's see if that works. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all the good comments and questions I've had about this project. Keep those coming. I'll answer every one as long as that's possible. And uh, I love your ideas too. They're always a great way for me to think about what I need to be doing differently or uh, adapting uh, this, this project and all my projects. So as always here at Green Schwartz, our mission is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself, like growing your own food right in your backyard. So thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. That helps us on YouTube. And please subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday. And click the bell so that you're notified when we post a new one. Yeah. So they're in the kitchen. Okay, that's great. And a stack of them. And Courtney mentioned the recycling and the trash coming today and wanted to see if you had put it. I thought, well,